And we're live! We're live! <laughs> Minor technical commutal issues. <laughs> commutal? Oh, yeah, commutal. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! It's been eventful. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, remember camera? Camera. The bit, the, yeah. the one with the giant circle on it. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Hey, yeah. girl. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm Mike Holberson. This is Name Pending, and I'm Keeper. And this is Name Pending. And he's Mike. This is Name Pending. Thanks for jumping in with us again. We got a couple things we're going to talk about commute, travel, not hey, first, travel, freezing. First, things first, those crazy asses are out here when it's in the 20s. <sighs> it is 35 degrees right now and only getting colder what's the feels like i don't have a feels like i don't think let me look i'm curious now how cold is cold cold feels like 27 mm. that means when it hits 27 the low it's gonna feel like 20 so keeper's got a new modern propane fossil fuel burning yeah screw you electric <laughs> burn them fossils <laughs> So yeah, we have this. Um, let's start with the book talk before we get too lost in conversation. So okay. what have you read this past two weeks? So, I mean, I don't really want to talk about what I've read this this past two weeks. Um, I'm just kind of going over another book series. But I did want to talk about a different book series that I read years ago. And it is one of my favorite book series. And it is by a little known author called George R. R. Martin. No idea who that is. No idea? I'm kidding. <laughs> He's the I, one that made Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the dragons. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. Man, I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to snow. <laughs> so, Little, do a lot of people who are into that series know that he used to do sci-fi. I did know that, actually. Yeah. And one of his, the series that he did, which is one of my favorite series, is called Tough Voyaging. Okay. I didn't hear about this one, so... So, uh, I'm going to put my gloves on after I light, light my tobacco. Hey, we got everything out here minus a restroom. And the restroom's over there. Mm -hmm. We got cold beverages. You're going to have warm hands in a second. Mm -hmm. And we got our uh, breathing apparatus. I've got to filter this all this oxygen with something. Yeah, exactly. Carbon monoxide. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyways, the premise for Tough Voyaging, and let me go ahead and say, Tough Voyaging by George R. R. Martin, uh, the premise for Tough Voyaging. Is that how you pronounce it? Tough? T-E-F? George R. R. Martin. That's how I, sp that's how I pronounce it. I'm, I'm just checking. Something. Just checking. You never know. Someone might comment, say something. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying was... He was sci-fi before he jumped into what everybody knows him as. Yeah. Um, and the premise is, is that, you know, Tough is your, not your standard protagonist. He's a, uh, he's a, he's a, a fat, very large man. Like, okay. I think the description makes him out to be taller than I am. Um, okay, so he's large. Very large. D&D-wise, he'd be like, large or giant? Large, large, okay. Um, but he's like a he's like a soft spoken guy. He's easygoing. He's a merchant. Um, and if so, like I'm, one of our mutual friends. And if I'm remembering correctly, he was like transporting the salvage crew to find something. If I'm remembering the premise right, I don't know if I am because it's been a while since I read it. But essentially, they find like an old ship from way back in the age of like. You know, humanity's like high technology time. Okay. Right. So um, peak, peak technology. That? Yeah, yeah. Like, like we've degraded since then. We've spread across the stars, but our technology has degraded since then. Idiocracy. Um, and like these, this portion of humanity was known for um, like significant genetic engineering. Like okay, so we're talking about like cyber and not even cyber, but just full no, on no, microorganisms. Like, yeah, like like they could take like they could revitalize species. They could change your genetic makeup. They could produce completely new crops. Okay, 
that that could accomplish whatever. Um, and so, Tuff has a idiosyncrasy where he's got beloved cats. Like he's got more than one beloved. I'm liking cat. this more and more. Um, and I don't want to like ruin like the beginning of it because it, it's kind of. It's I the th- thing that grabs you. Yeah, but like you know, eventually, how it turns out is he takes control of this like world ship or whatever, right? It's like a giant ship, um, and you know, it's stories about him going from like civilization to civilization and doing trades with them, in one form or another, to. Uh, to help their world somehow in return for foodstuffs or technology or what have you. His entire goal is to just travel around, you know, the galaxy making trades. Okay. But he's doing it on a bigger scale than he was before, right? Now he's just an entrepreneur doing whatever. Well, I mean, yeah, now, now it's like these people are suffering from, like, world hunger. It's like, okay, well, now I can, you know... Bring from point A to point B. Pick I, it I up, can, put it down. I can, make a, I can make something that is designed to grow in your biome from the ground up. Chocolate plants, chocolate trees. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, uh, I, he... I'm not ruining anything when I say that. At one point, he makes a psychic cat. Oh, my goodness. That would be a nightmare. He, um... One of his cats, like, in the in the first story, gets, like, killed. And so he takes it, and he goes and... Bioengineers? No, he clones it. Okay. He makes a clone. He doesn't name it the same, because it's not the same cat. Yeah. Obviously, right? It doesn't have the same experiences and everything. But he's like, yes, I now... I understand the technology. I know what we can do with this. Okay. Interesting. So it's... I would highly, highly recommend Tough Voyaging. It is one of my, my favorite reads, right? Um, you know, and, and obviously I'm always a fan of like protagonists that are not your standard protagonists necessarily. And point up here for me, cause the book's going to be up here. Why do y'all do this to me? I have to edit this shit in. It's fine. You already have the book talk and I'll put the nice little clip right there and it'll, it'll, it'll work. Try and do this with my gloves on. Do you need help? No. You sure? Because I always like my bitches cigarettes. <laughs> hey, you got it working. Mm-hmm. Surprised you didn't have your clicker butane one. I thought about bringing out it, but uh, I just didn't. Just didn't because it wasn't priority. <laughs> I didn't even bring the cameras the first trip out here, okay? Second time's the charm. Then we had delicious hot cocoa. Oh, that warmed me up very good. It warmed me up well. So, so recently, I have gone a week without water. Yeah, I know. You've been visiting my house for uh, <laughs> your weekly showers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just keep rolling by if you need a shower. I mean, you no, got I got water my now. water working today. It's so, working. I mean, did you record it all so we can see all your chaos? Um, I didn't get the final like plugging the piece in and get it working, but I do need to record because I need to replace the release valve on it. Okay. The one you just concrete did that one. No, the, the release valve that goes on top of the pump. Okay. Okay. Because that's like leaking, which not a big deal. I can still yeah. run the, you run can it. still run and still have running water. Mm-hmm. So now you can get your dishes done. Mm hmm. It sucks when something like that happens. More importantly, I can finally flush my toilets again because I ran out five gallon buckets. All right, I had no more water left. Yeah, that that sucks. We always used to fill our bathtubs when freezes were coming in, just so we could make sure. I don't have. I know you don't have a bathtub. Yeah. I mean, you have an excess amount of five gallon buckets, though. So. Mm-hmm. For what a week. <laughs> You have a week's worth of flushing toilets for yes. five gallon buckets. Yes. Well, it's good to know. You've tested it out. Oh, yeah. yeah Stress no, tested, no, no. but it worked. Um, so the next plan, of course, is to build the well house finally after putting it off. Two years later. Two years later. <laughs> for, for what? Maybe a week of work? Not even? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I could really use a well house every year. Yep. I mean, we had our own excursion past week and a half oh yeah you had a fun time it's going up for my mom's 50th we're supposed to be back sunday 
So that puts me back Sunday before Martin Luther King's birthday. That's what it is, right? MLK Day? Milk Day? Is it his birthday? I don't know if it's... I know it's his day. It's his day. So we're supposed to be back before then. So that way I had all MLK Day to be off, recoup, get back caught up. A bird flew into the, the stupid engine of the plane. So they're like, oh, well, it's only going to be like a three, four hour delay. We got to take it apart, make sure nothing was damaged. Mm-hmm. They take it apart and then ice delayed us further. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, so now we're leaving because we're supposed to leave at six. 6 15, we're supposed to be leaving Chattanooga Airport. It's now 10, 11 o'clock. They're like, oh, it's delayed because of ice and O'Hare. It's like, okay, they're going to put salt down. They're going to do something there that they normally do. And then it was canceled. Well, the best part is there's 80 people here because there's two different flights now leaving within 10 minutes of each other. They canceled both flights. Oh, damn. So everybody's bum rushing. The customer service ladies up there that check your tickets, make sure you get on the right plane. As as per usual. As per usual. And I give props to them. Old Georgia lady. Super sweet. Er, calling everybody sugar, honey, sweetie. <laughs> like She's like, look, honey, we get the same update the same time you do. They don't tell us anything. We get the same app notification. We're trying to work with this same time as you. If you don't like our service, you can call or you can use the United app. Real sweet, real calm, dealing with everyone pissed off. I get it. You're trying to fly. You're trying to get back wherever. Oh, my gosh. Straight up chaos. So I called my parents. They live about an hour away. Called them, or my wife called them, and I was on hold with United trying to get a different flight. Yeah. Started drafting the email for work on my laptop, so that way once I got tickets, I'd at least keep them updated, Then I'd call them later. United was like, oh, we can push you out till Monday. Well, that's when the freeze is supposed to be coming in. The snow, we got snow, we got frozen. All flights were canceled. Yeah. no. So nobody left happening. Monday. First it's, off, also, it's what, an hour drive from your parents' house? So, so good luck. My, so we woke up <clears throat> at like 4 o'clock. My dad drove us there. We got there at 5, got through security, TSA, and then he drove an hour back. And then he napped because he woke up. And he's a veteran. Yeah. He's like, I'm going back to bed. Always nap. Always nap. And no joke. I was like, Jess, just call just call my dad. <laughs> they were at church. Oh, no. So they left my little brother wherever he was at. They left him at the church. You're not so little, little brother. Yeah, my not so little, little brother. He's 21 now. He's drinking and everything. Mm-hmm. Proper Irishman. Well, to be fair, he was probably drinking at like 12. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's common. <laughs> So he finally comes back, picks us up. We go out to eat at McAllister's Deli. We finally get through to United. So at this point, it's been like an hour and a half. I've been on hold. I was like, Jess, I'm done dealing with it. I, I'm, I'm going to go kickstart a landmine. Like This is driving me crazy. So finally got new ones for Wednesday. They pushed it because it was only Monday and Tuesday they were moving flights to. And we got it pushed to Wednesday. So at this point, I call my boss like, I'm stranded. I can't go anywhere until Wednesday. That's that's where I'm at. So then Wednesday rolls around. Uh-oh. Our, was it, two? We were going to leave at, we were going to leave at 12 to get back here at like 9-ish. Um, and Kelt, he was watching the house, watching the dogs. And he left at 12. I saw on my cameras. I was like, okay, well, I mean, we'll be home in about eight, nine hours. Dogs right. are fine. They've been in longer. And five minutes before we leave my parents' house, delayed. Now I'm going to miss all my connecting flights. Damn it, From Chattanooga to O'Hare. I'm going to miss the O'Hare to Houston. So I'm not even going to make it to that one. I'm going to miss the one from Houston to San Antonio. It's like, I was like, Dad, just sit back down. Just relax. I call him back up. They're like, okay, well, we can get you out. I think it was at like 6 o'clock. That puts me here in San Antonio at 12. But what they decided to do was fly me from Chattanooga to Detroit. I'll let them out in a second. Okay. So all the way to Detroit. And then from Detroit, we had a 35-minute layover. 35 minutes. And if you've never been to Detroit. Oh, I've been to Detroit. It's an H. Yeah. There's two long bars. Planes fly it, go in and out. And there's an underpart. I feel like I've been through every airport on the East Coast at one point. 
I do remember Detroit. I've been there before. And no joke, we hightailed it to the next spot to the point I'm sweating, my wife's sweating, <laughs> my kid is right here to the point my arm was sore just walking. It took 25 minutes to walk from one side of the terminal to the complete opposite side. Getting that dad strength going. Oh, no <laughs> joke. I should start doing whatever viral <laughs> TikTok video of like 80 pounds or whatever. I'm not going to do that, though. You got to switch arms, man. No, nah, just the one arm. <laughs> just, just, just high buff. tail. <laughs> just, <laughs> 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 you work out? Yep. <laughs> Some of those special sites. <laughs> but no joke. We made it two minutes before they closed the gates. And then there was only like 40 people on the flight. Finally make it back here, 11.45. It was like, great, now I got a 30, 45 minute ride home. Because we landed 11.45, I messaged a couple people. It's like, okay, now I got to drive home. Didn't get to bed till 2, woke up, went to work at 6. It's like, I'm exhausted. Let me go let out my dog. Yeah, dude, you were, you were on the struggle bus. I'm very glad that I didn't go to see your parents. Uh, because I would have driven and I wouldn't have made it back. Well, driving wise, there's people that left that were coming to San Antonio because we're supposed to go from Chad or Chattanooga to O'Hare and then O'Hare to San Antonio or Houston or Austin and then around and they're supposed to get here one way or another. There was, I think a group of six people that all got a rental car from Chattanooga and drove. Damn. Uh, <laughs> We're just fucking planes, trains, and automobiles here. No joke. And no joke. They drove down here. They got here. And one of the people, I didn't know this, was in my building today. <laughs> I was like, oh, no shit. You're stuck in Chawtown, huh? So like, yeah, I was stuck in Chattanooga. It's like, you're supposed to be on whatever flight number it was. He was like, yeah. Me and a couple people that were all coming to this area, we dropped two off in Houston, and the rest we dropped off along the way, wherever their respective area was. But yeah, no joke. One of the people that was supposed to be on the Chattanooga flight out of there drove the 14, 15 hours, and they just switched off. It's, I mean, props to them, man. And they all pulled out, I think it was like $50 a pop for gas. Yeah. And that got them all the way here. I was like, hey, well, you know what? Props to them. Whoever threw on the credit card, they all split the cost. At that point, it is cheaper than plane tickets. No, I mean, it is. They rented a, what was it? Because someone had all these mile points. So they got a Cadillac Escalade, like Lux, or I don't know, bad Bachelor. That's what it was. I don't know what that is. It's, a, it's one of their upgraded versions of the Cadillac Escalade. Okay. Loaded all their stuff in the back and just hauled. Hauled ass. Yeah. Like with strangers and shit. Yep. Yeah, I was like, you know what? Props to you because I'm too squirrely for that. Shit. So I didn't come strapped. <laughs> yeah, I'm too way too squirrely for that. Although that being said, well, no, I mean we could have bought a fucking car seat and fucking. <laughs> I, did this crossed my mind? I was like, like, if I had been there, we could have bought a car seat and fucking just. And we wouldn't even have had to because my parents have an extra car seat. That they're just like, oh, so trust me, the thought crossed my mind. <laughs> like when we Damn get there it, on <laughs> when we get there on Wednesday or to the airport, and I was like, if you guys cancel this flight, I'm I'm pulling well, 14 hours. It it realistically, I probably could have done it because I went in the hole for two days anyways. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not sweating it. My parents will be down in about a year and change. Yeah. Woo! Oh, my mom's excited. She, I called her on the way home today, and she was like, how warm is it there? Jess messaged me the other day. It was 75. I was like, this is our winter. Yeah. We go through all seasons in our winter. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, no. you wake up dressed like that. And then around, I don't know, first 14. snack? First snack? Yeah. You're first wearing, snack. you're wearing like, that was the rake. Yeah, okay. Well, you're wearing I mean, like a... Good job, mannequin. It wasn't any important equipment, so we're good. Good job, mannequin. You start wearing spring clothes, and then as we progress, you put more layers back on. <laughs> <laughs> My mom was like, it is 32 degrees, or 31 degrees. I was like, it's 54 right now, yeah. and I'm loving it. Yeah. Because it, I used a heating blanket at my parents' house. Anyone that knows me knows I love the cold. Nope. 
I did not love this cold anymore. Stop. I've lived in Texas a little bit too Stop. long. Stop. They're just trying to keep you warm. I, uh, my dogs loved this fucking freeze. They were all about this life. Because all they knew is that I was just there. You the were whole there. whole time. And they were like... Because I wasn't going outside or doing anything, so it was just cuddle up with Mike yeah, time. just cuddle up with Mike. You know, that or I would have... Because I'm sitting at my desk and I'm editing Probably with video. the fire going. Uh, yeah, I had the fire going the entire time because I'm trying to, like, cut that some of that electrical. Yeah. Because otherwise my heat's just running constantly. I actually turned it up. Like, I turned my AC up. So now it's 68 to 72. Damn. I'm telling you, that last freeze up there nah. chilled me to the bone. I, it uh, was The real feel was, like, negative 12. You know, I always have my curtains open. All the time? Closed. So, yeah, closed. Every single curtain closed. Because <laughs> I'm like doing everything in my power to fucking keep that heat in. Uh, and I had the fire going the whole time, and I busted out the electric throw for when I was sitting at the computer. And so I'd Just have the, put it on your lap. And I'd have it on my lap, all and then the it cats. would like hang down onto the dog bed. That I have a dog bed that sits under my desk. because As you should. Obviously. If you're in the office all the time, you should. Um, and like Pearl was in love with that throw. My she, dad's service dog. I turned on the heated blanket. She was my dog. <laughs> she was my dog. Like, he'd call her, and he'd look around for her, and she's laying here right next to me. I apparently passed out for, like, two hours between our delay and our next flight. I took so many naps. So many naps. But I do want to talk about, we briefly talked about Oh, briefly, we talked about Hell Divers One, one of my favorite games. Yes, top down. It was on PlayStation. Is how it started. It's on Steam now. They're releasing Hell Divers Two. I'm so excited for this because you're really gonna have a storm. Stor Ooh, been in Tennessee storm. too long. Storm, <laughs> Starship Troopers type vibe. Yeah, because you're a third person shooter now. Ooh. So now you're looking up at this giant behemoth of a bug, of a cyborg, or of a, the Illuminate. And it's pretty much uh, Protoss or any of your super high-tech alien robot mm -hmm. races. Full-on AI. That's got to be terrifying. Just like... Yeah, oh. I'm, I, after you talked so much about the first game, I'm kind of stoked. One of these times, because the Steam Deck, I can have four players on the Steam Deck. So you can test out Helldivers 1 at my place. <laughs> After podcast? After podcast. <laughs> I'm going to bring it out and I'll bust out the other PlayStation controller and we can play it on there. I found out that last night. I was like, me and my little brother playing. I was like, Jess, do you want to play? Damn. It's like, I didn't know that. Steam Deck has just elevated its love in my life. Hi. Um, so I did want to talk about something fascinating one of my authors is doing. Which author? Um, uh, Will White. Will White. Will White. Yeah. That's a mouthful. So yeah, I know. Every time, I, I always stutter over it. I don't know Will if it's... Will White, Will White, Will White, Will White, Will... Nope. I don't, I don't know if it's my Texan or what, but like I always struggle. Um... <laughs> She was in Tennessee too long. You called me. We had a conversation. You're like, man, you've been up there too long. <laughs> but he's got a Kickstarter. And his fan base, and I'm part of his fan base, but his fan base is kind of ravenous. Okay. Um, so, like, he does Kickstarters, and they're, like, all in. Like, they hit all of his fucking markers. That's awesome. But he's done one, which I'm very interested to see where it goes, because it's for uh, an animated series of his book series, one of his book series. Okay. And I mean, the, the other animated series that have come out from many people who have done this, yeah. that never done it, is great. Like uh, the D&D &D one, Fox Machina. Yeah. Like, they did great. They did very good. Um, so, it has a lot of potential. Yeah, so I'm... Because of the action scenes, because of the relationships, because it has that, you know, Asian, like, Chinese... Test to it, or... That, flavor like, yeah flavor to it i think it's going to work really well animated you know the characters are all really fascinating and stuff so i'm gonna be very interested to see 
how it takes off yeah. and how it does. That's like a lot of the games being released this year really, really excite me because a lot of them are already reaching gold and gold pretty much means it's a full game already. Yeah. And they like hell divers was delayed from September last year and they said, we'll push it back to February, make sure the game's fully released be fully done before we release it. Cause we don't want everything to happen in 2023. Right. And I think we can all agree that we're tired of games releasing unfinished correct with the expectation that like oh well we'll patch it well by the time you patch it i'm already tired of it yep and a lot of a lot of companies released um there's a statement released i think it's second or third of january this month this year and pretty much they're saying we're just gonna delay it if we have to delay it because of this we'll say it and if people pre-order it We'll give them, if it's one of those, not pay to win, but pay for cosmetics, we'll yeah. give you credits here or credits here, or you'll get a bonus here, you'll get extra XP here, and we'll do that to those accounts that have done it. Yeah. I was like, you know what? That's actually pretty reasonable. I was like, look, if I if I pre-order a game and you're like, oh, it's delayed because this. Okay, well, I was told it'd be released at this game, at this time, at this day. Give me something back. I don't nope. want to keep throwing money your way. So this year, I do think will be a lot better than the past couple of years game-wise. Because last year, Baldur's Gate got up there on Game of the Year. There was a couple others that weren't AAA Studios. Yeah. So, I mean, AAA Studios really have have to step up their game because mm -hmm. Helldivers isn't a AAA studio. It's not even a AA studio. Speaking of... Triple A, did you see that shit going down with Ubisoft? Was this the one where whatever engine they were using their stuff on? That one? Because I know no. last year there was this whole, if you're using Unity, I think it was Unity, we're upmarking it a shit ton, and Unity lost a shit ton of people using yeah, their it, engine. That might be what I'm talking about. All I saw was that Ubisoft essentially started doing a money grab on something, and then like... I saw, like, they went, woo, for, like... Oh, their stock dropped. Yeah, their stocks, and I was like, man, I should dig into what happened. And then I didn't dig into what happened, and I brought it up on s stream completely, on podcast, completely unprepared. Because, you know, no, a lot, of, a lot of a lot of people have started... A lot of companies, not people. A lot of companies have started to try to get more... Unity has was one of the biggest names in gaming to do it. Yeah. They're like, oh, are you using our Unreal Engine? That's what it was. Yeah. Unreal Engine. If you're using Unreal Engine, instead of paying $100, you got to pay $1,000. Markup went up 10 times. Yeah, nah, bro. Y'all are already making... A, a bunch of people were just like, we have developers that have already been working on their own engines. Yeah. We'll just pay them. Well, and so this is, this is what... I feel happens a lot with large corporations is that they do get too big for their bridges. I don't think it's so my belief is I think it's more the board gets too big for their bridges. Well, it's, it becomes, it how becomes do we get the more company. money. Yes. How it, do we get more money? It and becomes like, more of a money grab microtransactions. Y'all are already making money hand over fist. Yeah. You shit. And you've made 20, thousand dollars taking a poop but in that's two not enough it's always how do we make more money instead of looking at it and going man we're doing really good making the money we're making now it's like no always how do we make more money and eventually you do you get to this point to where you you alienate people you do i mean every religion has this they have this parable of a rich man will never be able to give up all his stuff mm-hmm Every single religion has something of that. Well, if you're rich, you're not getting to heaven. If you can't give up all your stuff for the poor, you're not going to your own paradise. Like, many different religions have this, and they have this parable. Well, we're seeing this parable play out. Okay, well, you go in for this extra money grab, and your stock just plummets. Like, it drops. And everyone that has stock in the company is like, I'm in danger. Yeah. Like, it, it's crazy to look at this because there's a coworker of mine. He does the whole stocks, the the pool, the puts, the gains, the whatever. That's, he does like day trading and yeah, shit. Yeah, it's above mine. 
and he's got some other airmen and they've made decent money on it. They threw five hundred dollars and now they're up to like five thousand dollars. And okay. Then, and it's like, okay, well, good for you. I don't have time to invest in that. I it's don't. not my it's not my thing. It's not my cup of tea. I'll I'll get I'll get a financial manager. He'll yep. do that shit for me. You know. But they'll I'll I'll pay someone to do that shit for it me. It was so bad at one point earlier in I think it was mid 2023. So he, I think he bought into like Downey. It was like 500 shares of Downey and he only does it for like two or three weeks. Yeah. You gain it here. And then the whole point is to sell within like two or three weeks for this. Well, he didn't. So now he has two rooms. Senior airman. E4 has four rooms, three or four rooms full of paper towels. Because um, it's not just the stocks, it's um, it's orders too. It's like, I got the order for cheap, I want to sell it for more. Well, if you never get to that point, you just lost this amount of money. But the plus side, you have all these paper towels. A lifetime supply of paper towels. He was like, we started using paper towels for everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm he giving paper towels away. <laughs> he told me two weeks ago. He was like... Uh, before I left on the trip, he was like, all the towels were dirty. So he walked naked to his other bedroom, grabbed paper towels and dried himself off. He's like, I used like two or three rolls. I didn't even put a dent in it. Goodness, man. I was like, oh my goodness. No, nope. it's a struggle. I was like, this is why I don't do that. He's like, I mean, it was only $500. He's like, okay, I get it. We make this certain amount of money, but I'm not willing to spend $500 on three towels. rooms of paper towels. Yeah, I, I've got better things to do with my money. <laughs> Easily. I'll upgrade something. Like, uh I, uh... Speaking of uh, disposable products, one of my um, co-workers had been in the Philippines for a month. Oh, no. Is he coming back? Yeah. Yeah, he came back. Oh, yeah. This was his pre-trip. Yeah, this is his pre-trip before he retires to the Philippines because his wife is Filipino. Yeah. Right? So it makes sense. She's got family there. It's cheaper to live there. Yeah. Live like a millionaire. Yeah. Uh, pretty much like his retirement's pretty much going to have him living like a king. Um, so he was telling me that like, apparently they all think that Americans are gross because we do not have bidets. I have a bidet. Yeah. Like, the the I would argue that I am not wrong in stating in absolute in that the majority of Americans do not have a day. Oh, I'd agree on that. You oh, know? I was so excited. So my sister moved in with my parents. Yeah. It's two houses. Downstairs has its own kitchen, its own bathroom, its own separate bedroom, and then a living room. And that's just downstairs. Upstairs has its whole everything else. And then the third floor has a whole nother. So there's three separate houses put together. It's off a <laughs> river. Dad retired. He was like, oh, well, I mean, I want to live in luxury till I die. I was like, I mean, as you should. You got shot at for 23 years. It makes sense. Yeah. But since my sister moved in, they installed boudets on two toilets. The bottom toilet where the boys stay, my younger nephews, and then her restroom upstairs. The only two toilets I used the whole time I was there. One with boudets. Yeah. And you save on toilet paper. You don't use that much extra water. And you know what? Would you rather wipe with just paper? And you're like, I didn't get everything possibly. Yeah. Or rinse your butt and get everything and then just dry it off with toilet paper. It's so cold that my lighter stopped working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's too cold in it. I had to I had to warm it up in my in my in my chesticles. Yeah, not that close. No, not that close. It's not that cold, you faker. You're not even your fur is not even cold. He just wants to be loved. I know. That's all Anakin wants. So when we came home, it was it was so comical. Cause so we got into bed around one o'clock and it was like we're not even going to try to put Ruth in her own bed. We need sleep. Yeah. Um, just, we're done. So, Ruth's in the middle. I throw on whatever YouTube at the time. 
and me and Jess are laying there and all the dogs are like all up in our business. They haven't seen us in about a week. Yeah. A full on seven days. It was seven days by the time we got back. And all the dogs are loving up on Ruth. All the cats are like loving up on Ruth. We have the three dogs and three cats all up in our business. <laughs> and for Ruth, all she sees is dog, 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 cat, cat, cat. All her, And she's loving the attention. She's petting all of them. And I was like, yes, my kid doesn't beat my animals. Anymore. Anymore. <laughs> it's like she has learned. It's starting to get hot. It was like, okay, awesome. And it was, to me as a dad, I was like, this is one of those aha moments. Like yeah. this is, to me, that felt good. On top of being back in my own bed, that was my bed. I mean, that's the thing is like people try to make sure that they have comfortable beds for their spare bedrooms and they never succeed. Oh, no, the beds were comfortable. Me and Jess slept in the same room. It's a loft. It's a full-on fucking loft. It has its own doors, connects to the upstairs. It's The loft is the size of your house. Okay. Like, the whole size of it's your house. It's not saying something, because my house isn't that large. No, but that's that's just the loft. That's one portion of the size of their Are house. Are they going to be okay? Because they're going to downgrade when they come here. Oh, mom. Oh, my mom's been downgrading like crazy. I got <laughs> sent home with... My mink blanket from when I was eight years old, a bunch of books that I had from when I was young. Like, my mom's just been purging. So that way they can throw everything in a pod box. Two pod boxes is the limit. Anything past two pod boxes? Gone. It's gone. And knowing my mom, knowing the way my mom packs and gets rid of things, it's going to happen. They want to look at it like a 2,000 square foot versus their 5,800. 5, yeah. And I was like, okay, well. Props to you. But no, we had we had our own beds. And they're both like, what was it? Serta, super memory foam. Like, yeah. they were comfortable beds. It's not it your just bed. wasn't my bed. Yeah. Like, the beds were... Because it's not just... The, the beds were comfortable. Because your parents even gave us the bed with the pillow top. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, that's comfortable. But I'm reaching my feet off the edge of the bed. And well, I'm it's... only 6'1 at... On a good day, and I'm six foot normally. It's not just the bed. It's the environment. It right? is the environment. Because have you ever, like, moved stuff around in your bedroom, and it was like you had a little you, trouble you, sleeping? Because you had the you day had or two change, that... You changed your environment from what you were comfortable sleeping this with. This isn't my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was good. I mean, uh, the second night, we ended up pulling, like, our true minks, mink mink blankets from Saudi Arabia and... Bahrain, Turkey, that area, mm -hmm. the Middle East. <laughs> and one mink didn't do it for us. <laughs> Pulled out two minks. It was like, yep, we got Texas blood now. At this it point, was, we were cold. It was cold enough because I have a sensor for my thermostat in my bedroom and a sensor in my living room. And so it would be 68 degrees in my living room, and it would be like 52 in my bedroom. And so at this point, I said... I had already, I had put the electric blanket on, but I hadn't plugged it up, right? Because I didn't need to. You didn't need to yet. But then I was like, mm, it's that time. It's enough to risk a fire in the middle of the night. Plug, plug it in. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, these newer electric blankets. Are, oh, they're crazy. Yeah. Like, so Kel borrowed the Tesla when he was here. He was watching the house to the point that he took down the lights because the lights with the wind. Mm -hmm. He took down some and put them by the front door. I was like, thanks, bro. I appreciate it. And because most of our appliances are smart, I saw he did laundry, which was fine. I had yeah. no problem with him using any of the stuff. He changed the litter box. <laughs> it's just like, thanks, Kelt. <laughs> thanks, Kelt. <laughs> His response, you and your damn appliances. <laughs> <laughs> and the camera is in and out. And then the Tesla, it was, it was funny because he took it. He picked up his kids. He, It was a card that was available to him. Yeah. I was like, here you go. Use it. You're here. He was like. Bro, I love the Tesla, but I'm scared of the autopilot. <laughs> it's like, I love how fast it heats up. I gave him a little credit card that comes with the Tesla so you can swipe it. And if you needed to charge anywhere, it would have just built my account. It's fine. But his kid was in there. So I started messing with this kid. Because <laughs> they would. he went to like Bass Pro Shop with his family. Yeah. And the kid didn't want to go into Bass Pro Shop, so we left him in the car. I mean, 
it's warmer inside the car than it is outside. Right. So I turn on the AC to like 75 because I got a notification. There's movement inside your car. Okay, so I'm going to look inside my car because that means the key isn't inside my car. Yeah. So I was like, oh, his kid's in there. So I turn on the heater. He had seen the back. Okay, at least keep him warm. 70 degrees, that's decent enough. He's wearing a parka, a jacket. All right, big brother, fuck. And I was like, and then he starts rolling down the window. And I was like, do you want me to turn down the AC? <laughs> He's over here freaking out. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so he can't see it. Got it. So I messaged Kel, hey, your kid's this. It's fine, I'm just letting you know. He's like, yeah, he didn't want to leave the car because he hates the car, but he hates this shop more. It was Bass Pro Shop. He just Bass it, Pro Shop. I don't know why you wouldn't want to go into Bass Pro Shop. He was probably just in a fit or something. Yeah, in a well, mood. you know, kids. I was like, man, if it was when I was a kid, <laughs> smack upside the back of the head, told you you're going wherever the fuck I tell you. Yep, and you better be quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll so, fucking, I'll drag you into that fucking laundry rack over there and beat your ass. I sit your back. Turn on the heated seats. I let him know who it was talking on the car. And the AC's at 70 right now. He's like, I appreciate it. Yeah, we're out here and out and about. He's like, okay, well, no rush. I mean, he's safe in the car. Yeah. There's cameras all over the place. And you're good. End up, I guess, Monica, I guess, asked something. And he eventually came out, picked up his kid, and either walked him to his wife. Whatever. And- and whatever and then he drove home but no it was it was pretty funny because i'm over here hitting the fart application on my phone <laughs> some cars <laughs> farting <laughs> but I, I was like well he's in here i at least gonna keep it 70 at least yeah. keep it decent i looked at the charge looked at everything and the funniest part when kel was driving i was over here in the fart button for like a good five minutes just you <laughs> you <laughs> don't trust some teslas Oh no, you you have I can remote control it from my phone. Like he went to church one day with us and no joke, he parked in the back where I normally park and me and him are talking by his bike. And I have the car come around and pull up right next to us. He was like, Did you just do that from your phone? <laughs> He's like, Yeah, my car's a drone. <laughs> like the, that's what it is at this point. So speaking of drones, have you seen all these uh Tell me you're trying to talk about North Korea. No. You don't know about what's going on in North Korea? Uh, no. Okay, I'm listening. All ears. Have you seen all these like car drones that people are putting together and assembling? Like, I think we're getting closer and closer to like flying cars being a legitimate thing soon. We have flying cars. Yeah, but like for us. Oh, for your average user. I yes. mean, the car's about $120,000 to fly. Yeah, no, but like to own and to go to work in. I mean, that would be awesome. A landing strip everywhere. Just just autopilot, boop, take me to work. Take me to work. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we can't all be Zach. <laughs> Falls asleep in the Tesla. <laughs> uh, but what about, what about North Korea? So North Korea, somehow, from multiple transactions, third, fourth party, because we sold them to our alliance from... USA to whoever, whoever we're allies with. Yeah. So he sold it to them, and somewhere along the lines, the first Predator drone is now in North Korea. <laughs> One of the first ones. <laughs> and They know we can track that shit, right? <laughs> the funniest part is Kim Jong whatever is like, oh, well, I'm just going to start bombing everyone. It's like, you know those have a limited range. Mm-hmm. Like the, And you already are like, well, we hate China now. So now we have this single party that can't go anywhere because they have to travel through China to get to their other ally, yeah. Russia. If you just cut off everything from China, you're not going. And then they have this Predator drone, like, oh, we're flying it, we're doing this, we're doing this. And it's like, oh, this is cute. Yeah. Like this, nothing's going to Meanwhile, happen. across the border, we're flying like 30 of them. Right? At least 30 of them. You know. Just fucking hold on. We've got target locks on every facility on your side of the border. So do you know about North Sentinel Island? Outside yeah. of Yeah. So I was talking to a, a coworker at work. 
and he was like, what are you looking at? I was like, the one island that nobody can ever go to ever? I was like, what do you mean? Well, 2018 was the last time someone went there. He was a YouTuber, a traveler, world-renowned, and he disappeared. Boop. Like, he went there, uploaded it to the cloud, and whatever he had set up, it pushed it out, and the last video is him landing on the beach. And people coming out with bows, arrows, spears, and he's gone. Yeah. Like, all right. They idiot. still haven't found the remains of this guy. That's that's Darwinism right there. Well, the craziest part is they have, um, I think it's the Indian Indian government, India government, and um, France, M M M um, Myanmar, Myanmar. Yep, that one. Myanmar. Myanmar. I know where it's at on a map. Myanmar. I can't pronounce. I can't pronounce it. But no joke, they have what's supposed to be 24 seven patrols there. How this guy got in, who knows? But there was progress from two, was it 1980 to about 2012. There was a dude going there all the time, throwing care packages out there to him. Boat was filled up with arrows, like shooting at his boat. Yeah. And eventually he was able to get in. There was a documentary about this. He went and explored what they allowed him to see with them. And then he left, and then he died in, I think, 2013, 2014. So 2012 was his last visit. And since then, all communication to them. Because we can bring diseases and illnesses that they've never had. We could kill whole population. Population? Populations? Ooh, I've been in Tennessee too long. Damn, boy. You yeah, <laughs> have whole a little bit more of that drink. I'm going to. Definitely. A whole population of aborigines, essentially. People yeah. that aren't open to the real world. I mean, I think we've talked about this on podcast before because I mentioned that, you know, those aren't the only places. Like, there's places in the Amazon. But we didn't talk about North Sentinel Island. We did talk about other places, like, in the Amazon. Because people don't go there, and they know that they are not welcome. Shoot, we were in Brazil, and they're like, oh, where are you going? Oh, this small town right here by uh, the Amazon forest. And they're like, oh, well, don't pass this. There's picket fence and there it's painted orange. And no joke, this fence is painted orange. Like you're like, oh yeah, like hunter orange, brighter. Damn. So you can tell they don't want you to mistake. Don't pass it. And people still pass it. People still go in. I actually looked at that number. Was it last year? I think it's like 387, last I looked at it, have gone into the Brazilian rainforest and disappeared. Either from animals, aborigines. The elements. Elements, just because, gone. Because, you know, I remember, I'm going on the way back machine here, but I used to, and I still cycle back to it and watch Survivor Man. Les Stroud, Survivor Man. Okay. Um... The original survivalist, right? Yeah, the original. Like, like he started that whole survival genre, right? And he did it. That right. was back in ninety seven, ninety eight. No, thought, it was no, before he that. In the, he started in the thousands, like two thousand one or something like that. I thought they recorded before two thousand. They might have recorded before. Who, Les Stroud? Yeah. No, no, like he he recorded and then produced, and also. Maybe like, I'm thinking about something else. You're thinking about someone else, I think. But he he recorded and produced, and the unique thing about him is that he did all of his... Like, he hauled his own equipment out there. He actually did. Set up all of his cameras. He did it himself. He didn't have someone else assist Survived yep. out there. And I loved it, too, because it was the real, real of survival. Because this is a survivalist. Yeah. Right? Like, this is a guy who did guide like survival guide stuff and stuff like this. And don't get me wrong. Like he went out there beforehand before shows and he went out to the region and he went out with guides for that region so that he could, you know, know what, so he wild, could know what's going on and then what do it wild himself. edibles yeah. were and stuff like that. But even still he would go out there and most of the time he would starve because that's the realness of survival is like, like being out in the wild and just getting food. Look, we've tried camping trips like this. We brought <laughs> beer and beer and beer. 
And I think w- the first time we had a bottle of liquor. That was not enough to sustain us. Sustain us. Us. Sustain us. Woo! Yeah. I've been but, in Tennessee too long. Way but, too uh, long. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I loved it because he really did, like, he started coming out with stuff and he started gaining in popularity. And when he, he started, did it, though. He really did it. And then yeah. everyone else was going out with, like, crews. He, he built the genre of this. Yes. And, and now we have, like, Bear Grylls or Naked and Afraid. And and you can actually, you can go out and he does... Um, uh, this one, actually, he, he has he does, died... Travel. He does all. Uh, by the way, all of his stuff is free on YouTube. You can go. You can go to his Les Stroud YouTube page, and you can watch all of his episodes. I'll link it below. Um, he uh, he also does um, director commentary on his old shows now. Okay, that's where he awesome. sits down and, like us, he has a drink because bless this man, he drinks the good stuff. He's over here like I fucked up, <laughs> and this is where I fucked up. No, I should have. I mean, it's it's really it, it. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm I'm obviously a fan, right? Um, I've watched all his stuff at your house, but like because it was on YouTube, and I was just like, play. I'm I'm waiting. I don't remember. What, I think it was just one of the times me and Jess and Ruth just came over. I was just like, sure, it's on his top picks. Click. <laughs> d- d- okay, we're doing. He was like. I'm just going to sleep in this tree. And no joke, the tree was mostly hollowed out and he just killed or took out most of the termites because it was a termite nest. He was just like, this is the best place to stay warm. And he grabbed whatever tarp he had and whatever twigs and branches and he built a little, like, abode, a small little house. And he's just like, this is where my shoes go. I'll put it on uh, my shirt because the fire's here and I'm going to be more than enough warm. And I'll just throw my coat over like a blanket, and that's exactly what he did. All right, we're back. So, so we were talking was, about YouTube. We were gonna dive into. So we we were talking about Lestra. We were talking about his Survivor Man stuff. But I really wanted to talk about is his new stuff that he's producing with a sh- with a, a friend of his who's a chef, and it's called Five Star Michelin Chef. Potentially, I, I, yeah, I think I think so. I think he's a five star chef. Um, don't okay. quote me. Um, quoted. <laughs> quoted. Quoted. Uh, I think he's a very good chef based off of what I've seen him do, but it's called Les Strauss Wild Harvest. And I think it's international now. Um, and it's it's on PBS. So, like... Oh, that's awesome. It's huge. Like, it is educational to the nth degree, and they just... They go out wherever. And Les, Yeah, we're going camping... Here and we're yeah. gonna we're gonna find out the stuff that's native here and good here, and, and make something out. And of it. he collects wild ed- edibles, right? And his chef friend, who's never interacted with these ingredients before, makes stuff from it. And what I love most about this, though, is not necessarily the successes, but the failures, because they don't. We've, we've it up. talked about this offline before. Yeah. We've talked about the failures, and it was just like, this is horrible. I mean, the food's edible, but it's horrible. Like, you can eat it, and you'll be fine, mm-hmm. but it tastes disgusting. But they don't gloss over it. They go, this dish was a miss, and they're not shy about no, it. No, you showed me a video of this before. Yeah. Like, I, I do remember you showed me a video. And you were so ecstatic to show me. And I was like, okay, sure. Let, let's see it. Let's show it. And you're like, oh, this is perfect. This is one of their bad ones. Yeah. And you start playing it. and But they're real. But that's that's really what... It's not because he couldn't produce a dish from it. It's because he wasn't shy about the fact that it wasn't a success. Yeah, he's trying new stuff. Yes, it's new ingredients. But what's more... It, in, I say it's impressive that... It's so impressive that he does that... It's so impressive that all the successes that he has, right, with these wildly different ingredients, because, you know, I mean, he's used to standard fucking kitchen ingredients, yep. right? You know, your, your garlics, your salts, your whatever, right? He's not used to fucking just, you know, some shit that dude picked off the ground. Well, shoot, your bush in the backyard, I was like... Oh, dude, yeah, no, like, that's a perfect example. Because you sat there and you're like, is that an edible item? And I was like, well... I, I have no idea, and we looked so, it up. So what do I do? Grab it. 
That tastes like that could be a tea or a seasoning. Like an herb. And we found out that it is both. And it's a natural herb. It's a natural herb. And that's why I haven't cut it down. That's why it's going to stay there is because I'm going to utilize that. Oh, that on steak. Ooh, I think that would be really good. Ooh. I can't wait till spring comes around. You know when it's warm? Mm -hmm. (laughs) The one rain we get. Yeah, but but really watch it. I think I think you and Jess would really enjoy it. Les Stroud's Wild Harvest. It's on PBS. He has a cookbook for it now. Well, they're into multiple seasons. We watch a bunch of cooking shows because I love cooking. Mm. I really, really, really love cooking. Like we just bought into the hex clad, whatever, and that's fine because I can throw it in the oven. I couldn't do it with my other pans and pots. Yeah, I can throw it in the dishwasher. I can use metal on it, and it's nonstick. That's you know what that's enough for me, right? And it cooks so much faster. Jess was cooking something yesterday. It was like, it was it was a healthier dish. It was rice, bell peppers. What kind of rice? Um, brown rice. Okay. No, brown rice is really healthy. Yes, and it had um, um, she put some seasoning on it, and it had a little bit of meat in there, mm-hmm. a little bit of ground meat from uh, one of the farmers we buy cows from here. Yeah, and. Oh my goodness, the flavor was amazing. But what cracked me up the most is Jess is cooking. She's like, oh, this is cooking a lot faster than I thought. The pans and pots heat up so much faster. I don't know what technology they use. The hex ones? The hex clads? Yeah, I mean, I've seen like ads for them and stuff like that. Now I understand having them, why Gordon Ramsay gets mad at people. He's like, a steak can easily be done in eight minutes. Yeah. Flat. Yeah. Anything over that, you're going to burn it. If they want it medium rare, you're talking about six minutes. Like, it's literally butter basted. Done. And it's cooked to perfection. See, but I I still am on that that, that cast iron. So I will never, never. My sister. So I was cooking steaks up there. My sister goes, hey, we got a cow. It was my Christmas gift from uh, my in-laws. I can't cook steaks. Nobody here can cook steaks. You live in Texas. You know how to cook steaks, and I do. Yeah. And I enjoy cooking steaks. It's like, okay, well, it's negative two outside. I'm not cooking steaks outside. Do you have cast iron? She's like, yes. I was like, okay. So my mom has five burners, one, two, three, four, and then one long one in the center. And it's all propane. It's all gas. Yeah. So I have two cast irons here, and I have two other uh, just silver copper ones yeah so i'm starting them there cooking the inside because they want some wanted it well done some wanted it medium rare so i'm what heathens wanted it well done your dad no (laughs) oh no (laughs) i don't know he kind of looks like a well done man no he (laughs) he likes it medium rare that's right i said it i called you a well done man (laughs) (laughs) no he likes it medium rare so i'm over here cooking these and they're they have the nice cooked blemish on them, but they look like crap. Mm-hmm. And that that's normal. If you're cooking in your normal, that's the way it's going to look. So I'm moving over to the cast iron. Just a layer of butter. I've already salted them, already peppered them. They're good. They're allergic to everything under the sun, so I couldn't actually season it the way I would normally season a mm-hmm. steak. Throw in the cast iron, get a nice little like brazen, burnt yeah. type color on it. And bring it out there. First thing my dad says, who walked outside to make steaks? My man. I was like, no one. <laughs> no one did. You know how cold it is? Screw that. <laughs> and then I have to watch the fire for the remaining because the wind's blowing uh-huh. and howling like crazy. Nope. But no joke made it. One of my nephews hates meat. Does not eat, does not like eating meat, doesn't like chicken, doesn't like steak, doesn't like pork. He is forced to eat it, so that way he has protein and he's growing up and he ate the steak, no complaints. My sister goes, he has always complained about, what did you season with? Salt, pepper, butter. And they can't even have normal butter. I'd use smart balance butter. Yeah. So I'm limited on what I could use and I literally rubbed it. Every steak was rubbed differently. I washed my hands after it, rubbed the steak again because I didn't want, I didn't want to mess up anything. I was just like, oh, here we go. And it was done. 
my dad had two steaks. <laughs> my mom doesn't eat meat, so she just had the mashed potatoes my sister made. But going through it using cat, because I don't use cast iron a lot. Mm -hmm. I have two really, really good cast iron pans. Yeah. But I don't use them all the time. But my, I hit, I told my sister, I was like, okay, the steaks are cooking a lot faster than I thought they would, because I don't cook on gas, I cook on electric. So we're doing this, and I was like, I originally told her, okay, you maybe got about 20 minutes from preparation to done. Well, propane gas cooks a lot faster than what I expected. And I was like, you got maybe five minutes. So no joke. The giant like pampered chef silver bowl with the little rubber padding. So if you're mixing the instant potatoes, because it's just what they can afford. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's fine. I mean, you provided the steaks. I cooked them. You made... You I'm can not make, complaining. You can make delicious instant potatoes. And I loved it. Like, for me, the steak was a little bit more medium rare than blue, because that's how I like my steaks. I like them more blue. Yeah, I like I like a with healthy you. meat, and then a little bit rare inside, enough to get all the crap out. And then I just want a warm, cold inside, if that makes sense. And, oh my gosh, done. Yep. Hey, guys. This has been name pending. This has been name pending. And we went a little bit longer, but it's a good conversation. We'll continue the rest offline. Hey, I want you to fuck that like button. And throw a comment below. I will respond. He will respond. So throw a comment below. I've been Mike Culperson. I'm keeper as always. <laughs> it's cold as shit. It's cold. We're going to break this motherfucker down Go inside. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been fun hanging with you. Throw a comment below. As he says, fuck that like button. He's Mike. I'm Keeper. It's been fun hanging with y'all. That was a good close. <laughs>